Yellowstone has been sealed off after satellites spotted something never seen before. Giant cracks tearing through America's most dangerous supervolcano. More than 80,000 potential earthquakes, a magma plume moving northeast, and signs of a corridor that could extend all the way to California. Even more worrying, small eruptions and strange gas plumes have fueled fears that the caldera is entering a new phase of unrest. Could this be the moment when Yellowstone finally splits wide open? Follow me, this is urgent news. In mid-August 2025, Yellowstone National Park was suddenly closed to the public. Reports circulated of gates being closed, patrols being diverted and marked areas temporarily closed to the public. Official statements were vague, citing public safety and maintenance reasons. But these explanations seemed unconvincing amid the growing tensions. Inside the boundaries, some visitors described seeing official vehicles, federal, geological and emergency along with additional surveillance equipment being installed. There was no record of widespread military mobilization but the sense of urgency was clear. What prompted such a drastic move? Using specialized tools and satellite imagery scientists have noticed a network of new cracks spreading across the park's terrain, which had been stable for years. Even more alarming, some of these cracks are forming along fault lines previously considered dormant, suggesting powerful forces deep below the Earth's surface are stirring. Are these cracks a reminder of the park's unstable nature? Or do they mark the beginning of an era in which Yellowstone transforms into a rising giant? While officials address surface cracks, researchers made a groundbreaking discovery that transformed our understanding of Yellowstone's seismic activity. Using advanced artificial intelligence to analyze decades of seismic data, they uncovered something shocking. Over 80,000 earthquakes completely missed by traditional monitoring methods. For years, scientists believed they had Yellowstone's earthquake activity mapped. They tracked major swarms, significant tremors, and events clearly registered on seismographs. But they were only seeing a fraction of the full picture. These 80,000 newly discovered earthquakes were minuscule so small that conventional detection filtered them out as background noise. In fact, these micro-earthquakes are not random. They trace patterns. They map Yellowstone's underground volcanic structure revealing where magma moves, where fluids flow, where pressure builds. Think of it like this. If Yellowstone were a human body, these microquakes would be its pulse. And what scientists discovered is that this pulse has been far more active than anyone realized. The AI analysis revealed swarms of tiny earthquakes clustering in specific areas, some aligned with known hydrothermal features, others appeared where scientists expected minimal activity. Now, before you panic, let me be clear about something. These microquakes don't signal an imminent eruption. Small earthquakes are normal for Yellowstone. The volcano constantly adjusts, releasing pressure incrementally. That's actually healthy. But combine these 80,000 hidden earthquakes with new surface faults, thermal anomalies and other emerging changes, a pattern emerges, one suggesting Yellowstone's underground systems are far more active and complex than we ever understood. And that brings us to the most controversial discovery of all. Giant magma block on the move. Deep beneath Yellowstone, three to nine miles down, sits a massive reservoir of partially molten rock. This magma body feeds the park's geothermal features and represents the volcanic system's active heart. For as long as scientists have monitored it, this magma body has been relatively stable. It shifts slightly, that's normal, but its overall position and behavior have remained consistent and predictable. But recent satellite data and GPS measurements show something unprecedented. The magma plume is drifting northeast. This might not sound dramatic, but geologically this is massive news. Magma bodies this large don't casually relocate. When they move something fundamental is changing in the underground plumbing system. In fact, evidence of this magma movement is everywhere. Ground uplift in areas that were previously stable. GPS sensors spreading apart by millimeters per year. Minor surface fractures appearing in patterns that align with the direction of movement. Even some of the recent muddy eruptions and gas surges have occurred in zones that match this northeastern drift. So what's causing this movement? One theory is that new magma is being injected into the system from deeper sources, pushing the existing magma body in a new direction. Another possibility is that changes in the hydrothermal system, the network of hot water and steam that permeates Yellowstone are altering pressure distributions and forcing the magma to migrate. What makes this particularly significant is the timing. This northeastern drift coincides with surface cracking, earthquake swarms, and the park closure. These aren't isolated events, they're connected pieces of a larger puzzle. 
That puzzle reveals a volcanic system evolving in real time. Its pressure points are migrating. Its behavior is becoming less predictable. Whether this signals a new phase of unrest, or simply another chapter in Earth's long geological story, nobody can say for certain. But one thing is clear. Yellowstone is moving. And the scientific community is watching closer than ever. If you found this helpful to you or someone you love, please share this video with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel. It means a lot to our channel. And I promise to continue bringing you more great content. Now we need to talk about one of the most debated and controversial theories to emerge from recent Yellowstone research. The Corridor Theory. This idea challenges a fundamental assumption that geologists have held for decades. The assumption that Yellowstone's magma system is isolated, contained within the boundaries of the park and the surrounding region. But what if that's not true? What if Yellowstone is actually connected to a much larger underground network? Recent seismic data has revealed something unexpected. A network of fractures and potential magma pathways extending southwest from Yellowstone. Some researchers believe these could represent an underground corridor stretching hundreds of miles toward California. Before you dismiss this as science fiction, consider the evidence. Seismic imaging has detected anomalies in the Earth's mantle beneath the western United States. These anomalies suggest zones of hotter, less dense rock that could facilitate magma movement over vast distances. We also know that the western United States sits atop a complex system of tectonic plates, fault lines and volcanic features. The idea that these might be interconnected isn't as far-fetched as it might sound. If this corridor theory is correct, the implications are staggering. It would mean that shifts in Yellowstone's magma system could potentially influence volcanic and seismic activity hundreds of miles away. It would suggest that the western United States is not a collection of isolated geological features, but rather one vast, interconnected dynamic system. Now I need to be clear here. This theory is still highly debated. Many geologists are skeptical. The evidence is intriguing but not conclusive. We're talking about processes happening miles beneath the Earth's surface, in regions we can't directly observe. But here's why this theory matters, even if it turns out to be wrong. It's forcing scientists to think bigger, to consider connections they might have previously dismissed, to look at Yellowstone not as an isolated supervolcano, but as part of a continental-scale geological system. And that broader perspective is revealing patterns that were invisible before. The corridor theory might sound like speculation but recent events across the American West are making scientists take it more seriously. In early 2025, geologists detected something unusual in Arizona. Not just one anomaly but 10 major geological disturbances scattered across the state. These included newly mapped fault lines that hadn't been active in recorded history, shifting canyon formations where the ground was literally moving and fresh gas seeps emerging in regions that had been geologically stable for thousands of years. Now Arizona is over 600 miles from Yellowstone. Under normal circumstances you wouldn't expect any connection between the two regions, but here's what caught everyone's attention. The timing. These Arizona anomalies appeared during the same period when Yellowstone's activity was intensifying. When the magma body started drifting northeast, when those 80,000 microquakes were being discovered in the data, when the surface cracks began appearing. Coincidence? Maybe. But it gets more interesting. Remote sensors across several southwestern states picked up coincidental tremors during this same time frame. Small seismic events in Nevada, Utah, New Mexico and California. Again individually none of these events were particularly significant. But taken together, they paint a picture of a region experiencing widespread geological adjustment. Some scientists are now speculating about continental-scale tectonic movements. The idea that stress building in one part of the western United States could be transmitted through the Earth's crust, triggering responses hundreds of miles away. Think of it like pressing down on one part of a waterbed. The pressure doesn't stay localized, it ripples outward, affecting the entire system. Could Yellowstone's deep tectonic movements be creating similar ripples through the western United States? It's a question that's reshaping scientific debate. And it's why researchers are now monitoring not just Yellowstone in isolation, but the entire western region as an interconnected system. The magma body drifting northeast, the swarm of 80,000 microquakes, the newly forming surface cracks, the Arizona anomalies, the scattered tremors across multiple states. Each detail alone might seem minor, almost insignificant, but together they reveal something profound. A system in motion, a landscape evolving, 
and perhaps most importantly a reminder that the ground beneath our feet is far more dynamic and interconnected than most people realize. With all this activity at Yellowstone, it's no surprise that rumors and fear have spread almost as fast as the cracks themselves. Social media exploded with claims and theories. Some said animals were fleeing the park in massive herds, others insisted that officials were hiding evidence of an imminent eruption. Viral videos showed bison supposedly running away from Yellowstone with dramatic narration warning of impending disaster. So let's address this directly and separate the fear from the facts. First, the animal behavior. I reached out to wildlife biologists and checked reports from the National Park Service. The truth? There is no unusual wildlife behavior at Yellowstone. The bison are grazing normally. The elk herds are following their typical patterns. The bears are doing what bears do. Animals have incredibly sensitive instincts for detecting danger. If a major volcanic event were truly imminent we would see clear signs in animal behavior. Mass migrations. Unusual agitation. Changes in feeding and movement patterns. None of that is happening. The herds remain calm, which is actually one of the most reassuring signs we have. But what about the park closure and the increased monitoring? This is where things get more nuanced. Yes, officials have cited routine safety and maintenance as reasons for restricted access to certain areas. And yes, that explanation feels insufficient given the scale of monitoring equipment being deployed. The skepticism is understandable. When you see new seismic stations appearing, when access is suddenly restricted, when official statements seem vague, people naturally wonder what's really going on. Here's my take based on the research. Something is definitely happening beneath Yellowstone. The ground is cracking. The magma body is shifting. The seismic activity is more complex than previously understood. These are real measurable changes. But happening and catastrophic are not the same thing. Yellowstone has experienced periods of unrest many times throughout its history. Ground deformation, earthquake swarms, Hydrothermal explosions. These are part of the volcano's normal behavior. The challenge for officials is communicating uncertainty. They can't say nothing is happening, because clearly something is. But they also can't predict what these changes mean for the future. Will this period of unrest lead to a major event? Or will it simply be another cycle in Yellowstone's long geological story? Nobody knows. And that uncertainty is uncomfortable for everyone. While scientists debate theories and monitor data, Yellowstone itself has been sending its own signals, small but significant events that offer clues about what's happening underground. In November 2024, visitors to a remote thermal area heard a sudden explosive sound. Mud, steam and scalding hot water erupted from the ground creating a new crater about 20 feet across. Then in January 2025 it happened again. Another hydrothermal explosion in a different part of the park. These events are what geologists call hydrothermal explosions, and they're actually more common at Yellowstone than most people realize. They occur when superheated water trapped underground suddenly flashes to steam blowing through the surface like a natural pressure cooker releasing its contents. Individually these explosions aren't particularly dangerous. They're usually small localized and occur in areas away from major tourist sites. But what made these recent events noteworthy was their timing and location. Both explosions occurred during the same period when other unusual activity was being detected. The surface cracking, the seismic swarms, the magma body movement. Researchers investigating these explosion sites found evidence of shifting underground pathways. The hydrothermal system beneath Yellowstone is like a complex network of pipes and chambers constantly circulating hot water and steam. When this system reorganizes, when pathways shift or new connections form, it can trigger these kinds of explosive releases. Following the explosions monitoring equipment detected temperature spikes in nearby thermal features. New hissing vents appeared where the ground had been quiet before. Gas emissions changed in composition and volume. All of these signs pointed to the same conclusion. Yellowstone's subsurface systems are reorganizing. The plumbing is changing. And these muddy explosions are like warning lights on a dashboard, telling us that adjustments are happening deep below. Now here's what's important to understand. These hydrothermal explosions are not precursors to a volcanic eruption, they're driven by water and steam, not by magma rising toward the surface. But they do tell us something valuable. They confirm that the underground environment is dynamic right now. Pressure is shifting. Fluids are moving through new pathways. The system is adjusting to whatever changes are occurring at depth. Scientists describe these events as the volcano's way of releasing pressure, and in many ways that's reassuring. 
A system that's constantly venting and adjusting is generally safer than one that's building pressure with no release, but it's also a reminder that Yellowstone is very much alive. The ground beneath the park is hot, pressurized and constantly in motion, and right now that motion seems to be accelerating. So with all this information, what are scientists actually concerned about? Because if you've been paying attention, you've probably noticed something. None of the experts are predicting an imminent eruption, but they're also not saying everything is fine. So what's the real concern here? The answer is uncertainty, and more specifically the realization that Yellowstone's behavior is more complex and less predictable than previous models suggested. For decades, geologists operated under certain assumptions about how supervolcanoes work. They had models for how magma moves, how pressure builds, how warning signs would appear before a major event. But the recent discoveries are challenging those assumptions. The 80,000 hidden earthquakes revealed that seismic activity is far more intricate than traditional monitoring captured. The drifting magma body showed that the system is more mobile than expected. The surface cracks demonstrated that stress is being expressed in new ways. And the corridor theory, whether proven or not, opened up the possibility that Yellowstone might be connected to a much larger geological system. All of this adds up to an uncomfortable truth. We don't understand Yellowstone as well as we thought we did. And that's what keeps scientists up at night. Not the certainty of disaster, but the uncertainty of what these changes mean. Here's an analogy that might help. Imagine you've been monitoring someone's heartbeat for years. You know their normal rhythm, their typical patterns. Then suddenly you detect irregularities you've never seen before. The heart is still beating. The person isn't in immediate danger. But something has changed, and you're not entirely sure what it means or where it might lead. That's essentially where we are with Yellowstone right now. The volcano is showing us behaviors we haven't seen before. And until we understand what's driving these changes, we can't predict what might happen next. This is why monitoring has intensified so dramatically. Scientists need more data. They need to watch how these changes evolve over time. They need to test their theories against real-world observations. The park closure, the new monitoring stations, the increased research activity, it's all part of an effort to reduce that uncertainty, to build better models, to understand what Yellowstone is trying to tell us. Let's zoom out for a moment and look at the bigger picture. Because Yellowstone isn't just a local concern. It's a window into processes that shape our entire planet. The Earth beneath our feet is constantly moving, constantly changing. Tectonic plates shift. Magma rises and falls. Pressure builds and releases. Most of the time these processes happen so slowly that we don't notice them in a human lifetime. But occasionally we get to witness a moment when the Earth's inner workings become visible. When the changes happen fast enough that we can observe them in real time. That's what's happening at Yellowstone right now. We're watching a supervolcano adjust, we're seeing its underground systems reorganize, we're observing changes that might take decades or centuries to fully play out. And here's what makes this moment so valuable. Every measurement, every data point, every observation is teaching us something new about how these massive volcanic systems work. The discoveries at Yellowstone are informing our understanding of other supervolcanoes around the world. The techniques being developed to monitor Yellowstone's changes are being applied to volcanic systems in Indonesia, New Zealand, Japan and South America. The lessons we learn here could help protect communities near other active volcanoes. So while the headlines focus on danger and disaster, there's another story unfolding. A story of scientific discovery, of humans working to understand the powerful forces that shape our planet, of technology and knowledge advancing in response to nature's challenges. Now I want to hear from you. Did you know about the 80,000 hidden earthquakes beneath Yellowstone? Does the corridor theory connecting Yellowstone to California seem plausible to you? Or do you think it's too speculative? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one and I love hearing different perspectives on these topics. If you found this deep dive into Yellowstone valuable, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Next week I'm investigating another geological mystery that's been making headlines. And trust me, you won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and remember, when the Earth speaks, it pays to listen carefully. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.